Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. As you can see, I'm not in my home theater. I'm actually in Wisconsin, hanging out with some new friends. This is Tony. This is his amazing home theater. This is Nick. He's the programmer. And this guy back here, he's the brains behind JTR, the owner and president. So in this video, what we wanna do is give you a room tour of his setup. And then we're gonna give you some impressions of my, or my impressions of your home theater, what I thought about it. And so with that said, let's head upstairs and we'll give you the grand tour. So as you come down the stairs, the first thing that you're greeted with is the uh, movie poster for whatever movie we might be watching for that night, as well as my uh, butler. He, uh, he greets you next to the popcorn machine. As you take a right, there's a ticket booth that I usually will print up the uh, tickets for the actual movie that we'll be displaying that night. As new people come into the theater, I usually like to do a kind of a photo booth of them and there's actually props throughout the uh, concession area. I kind of put their photos up to kind of, as a remembrance for myself, the different people that would came and then basically either enjoyed a get together or a demo or even a movie. Uh, we got the snap picture frames. So if I feel like I want to swap out movie posters, just snap it out, swap the different photo or basically movie poster and you're good to go. Off to the left is the extension arcade unit. Basically, I have put about 100 arcade games on there so people don't sit, spend 20 minutes trying to search through 30,000 games. So this kind of limits them and what they can do with it. Yeah, and if you come over to the uh, back side of the stairwell, it's kind of a mini concession area itself where it's got candies and drinks available in the mini fridge. There's a guest book that people can sign for after the movies. I usually will have the different movies that we've watched prior. You know, like John Wick and Greatest Showman. A lot of demo material for uh, JTR speakers. Got a uh, demo prop concession area with a working cash register. Um, got pricing up on the television. And as, he's, as uh, Youth Man's going around the room, you can see some of the props that we use, such as the gauntlet from Infinity War. And then obviously a restroom if anyone needs it. I even put the uh, signs up top so that uh, people would actually find their way in. That's where it started, folks. Back in the day, film projection. Actually, I think that one still works. I just haven't ever used it. Then we come to the entrance of the theater. So to the, uh, the wides, these are actually the, the right wide and left wide. Those are the JTR 212 RTs from JTR speakers. It's a treated room with uh, GIK, uh, essentially corner traps, the normal sound panels, and as well as um, Acoustamac for some of the other, such as the ones on the floor. All right, so the system consists of a JVC NX7 uh, 4K projector projecting onto a Seymour AV uh, center stage XD material screen. It's acoustically transparent. It's 150 wide. Uh, basically, it's uh, a 235 to one, which is the diagonal, it's a 162 inch. Behind the screen, there's an additional three 212 RTs from JTR, as well as two JTR Captivator 4000 ultra low frequency. In the rear, we have what they call the JMAR 
D-Box chairs. So the D-Box consists of many different parts. Um, the, the processor is called the D-Box HEMC, which then powers the actuators inside the chairs. The, the main chair, or the main listening position in the center front is basically the D-Box SRP 230. In the side chairs, it has the D-Box 3250C, and that's just the, um, the type of actuators that are inside. The center chair has four actuators, the outside chairs have three actuators. And then also on the center chair is the uh, Croson transducers. It's basically um, kind of one of the higher end buck kicker style uh, shakers that go underneath the feet. They don't attach to like the bottom of the, like underneath the where you sit or on the back. It just literally attaches to all four of the, the feet of the chair. The processor that basically runs my D-Box and my Croson's is the Denon AVR H3500X. For the rears and surrounds, I'm running the JTR single eight HTs. For the Atmos across the ceiling, I'm running the JTR single eight eight HTLPs, which are the low profile, so they don't stick out or stick down as far as the uh, the normal ones would. And then in the rear of the theater, I'm running uh, a custom basically JTR Captivator 4000 ultra low frequency that's broken up into two cabinets. So in the back row, it's actually kind of interesting. The, the two rear seats actually will get a near field sub experience. And then uh, the front row has the D-Box and the Croson's to kind of make up for any kind of loss of um, LFE that wouldn't go directly into the chairs. And the rear chairs that I have are the Berkline 12,000. I don't believe they sell them anymore. I think they went out of business. The processor running the main, uh, the main system is the Emotiva RMC1. Uh, powering the speakers is the Emotiva XPA Gen 3, three channel for the left, center, and right. And then I have an additional Emotiva XPA Gen 3 11 channel for the remaining channels in the Atmos setup. The, the full system is a 9.1.4 uh, uh, with four subwoofers. All right, guys, we are in literally the most incredible and I'm not lying, the most incredible home theater that I have ever experienced. And so um, now that we've given you a tour of the place, we've spent about the last, what, hour and a half? Hour and a half, yeah, sounds about right. Going through a bunch of demos. We've gone through, uh, you've got a really cool uh, setup. He, I, man, I wish I could describe, I'll let you describe kind of how that's set up and how you've got that implemented into your system but it even had some some notes for me and it's like youth man glad you're here sit back enjoy the show we go into some clips that was kind of low volume and basically what he was doing is warming me up and uh and i could literally i could see you i'd, I'd kind of look out of the corner of my eye because i'd be grinning ear to ear during certain things and you'd look over and go mm -hmm. i knew he'd be grinning on that one so and each scene kept getting a little bit louder a little bit more dynamic. We went through uh, various uh, clips from Ready Player One and Fury. And so I just want to share with you kind of my thoughts of what I experienced with this JTR full out home theater system. And so the first thing, honestly, that I noticed as we're playing uh, the first, even the first movie, even at low volume, I was feeling bass in my lower back and I swore that you had, you know, bass shakers in the seats. And he said, no, we don't have those on at all. Everything is just my subwoofers, the towers and everything. So I was feeling that in my back, my whole, you know, I wasn't feeling like this bass pressure that sometimes I've experienced in people's room where they've just got this bloated bass. It wasn't that super tight. But man, I was feeling some massive tactile bass. Um, and like I said, as we kept escalating and going to that next level, and even on the screen, it'd be like, oh, we're not done yet. We got another one. We're going even higher. 
And so another scene, we would go to the Hulk. Ridiculous amount of bass, but at no point did it ever distort. I mean, like ever distort. These, I mean, we were at, you said probably 130 well, dB? Basically, we were at reference volume with the bass uh, 30 dB hot. So or, no, sorry, 15 dB hot. So 15 dB hot. It was pretty loud at, at the end of that demo. Yeah, well, I, I did take it up one notch at the end, so it probably was around 16 to 17 dB hot okay. over reference. Well, so, for the bass only, not yeah, the mains. Sure. So, but again, incredibly, incredibly clean. I mean, just phenomenal. Um, listening to the JTR speakers, because, you know, I've heard the RS2s in my home theater. They're phenomenal, but I can tell you, I don't have them dialed in like you do. And so we're going to get you down there and help me set it up or something. Um, I've got a lot to learn in that area. But um, but some things I noticed with the uh, the towers. So you've got LCR, like I do. You've got yep. three identical speakers behind the screen. And guys, I've shared with you before, that is the absolute best way for home theater. If you can do it, put three identical speakers behind. Don't go with a horizontal center. Go with a vertical center. It's phenomenal. All of his tweeters are exactly at ear level, and that's phenomenal because that is very directional. But some things I noticed with that, even though we were playing really high volumes at the end, at no point did it ever get, like, I never wanted to kind of cut my ears like, man, this is just too loud. Yeah. It, it, it's hard to explain that it was dynamic in the fact that, you know, we had these super quiet scenes. And then we'd go to just massive scenes and you could hear every nuance, every detail, but it wasn't ear piercing at all. Um, clarity and detail in these. We're listening to um, uh, A Star is Born. Yep. So now we jump to um, still a movie that was still in surround, right? Yeah, and it's, Atmos. All, it's all Atmos. Yeah. Pretty much most of the clips, if not all the clips are Atmos. Yeah. So we were still listening in Atmos, not just two channel. Her voice incredible you know when he came out and he sang just this deep nice rich because these have got what 12 inch drivers in them uh yes. tens no, tens or 12s. Dual 12s so you got 12s here 12s here behind the screen those are all 12 they're all so the 12 so okay they're, they're the so there's five of those uh, so five across the front so the left center right and then left wide right wide gotcha so we've got identical speakers five up front powerful guys I mean, seriously, powerful. Um, listening to things like Tracy Chapman, we did, just, I'm telling you, we went through a gamut of demos and everyone literally impressed. Um, then we went to some surprises. He says, uh, I've got some surprises for you. And I went, okay, cool, I love surprises. So I didn't know, I thought I was gonna see maybe some lights, like either LEDs or maybe lasers. I, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, that's gonna that's gonna be cool, I guess. So we're literally, what movie did we pop in? The, the first one. The first one that was Unbroken. Okay, so we're watching Unbroken, right? And that's the plane scene, and they're coming in, and and so I'm just chilling here, and then all of a sudden my seat starts leaning forward. I'm like, okay, <laughs> and then it, it kind of rocks just a little bit, and then like planes are flying by, and it's like, <laughs> so we have. D box seats. I've never seen this in a home theater setup. And honestly, I always thought D box was kind of hokey. Like it was gimmicky. Yeah. At the trade shows, I typically do try to go to CDs every so often. And same thing. I felt uh, the first two times I experienced it, I actually felt that they were kind of a gimmick. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, at the shows, they, they, don't have a room this large typically for the event. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they usually show it on a 65 inch television with a small pair of speakers. And the problem that comes into play is that it doesn't, the experience that you get from the motion of the chairs, the chairs um, are the D-Box chairs from JMAR. And um, actually JMAR actually helped me get the rest of the components to get the D-Box. So I wanna give a big shout out to Mario at JMAR for, for doing that. Um, but basically, yeah, the experience at the trade shows, unfortunately, does not represent what you can recreate in a home theater experience. So 
the reason I it went from being one of the items that I would never have considered because I just thought it was a complete gimmick yeah. to oh my gosh I have to buy this. I'm sold, man. I doubt I'll ever own these, man, but I'm sold. They were they were tight. And of course you can adjust yeah. the volume, right? Yeah, you can adjust you can the adjust intensity. the motion, you can adjust the vibration. Uh, independently on all the chairs, if somebody does get motion sick, you can physically shut one of the chairs off. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so the, the reason why I decided to go from not wanting the product at all to essentially wanting the product was I went to a get together in Texas. It was, uh, I was at the trade show. Somebody offered basically me and a friend to go to his house to do a get together. And that experience kind of blew me away. Once the D box was properly set up for the environment, and the motion matched what was on yeah. screen at the volumes, it became a transformative experience. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, it is fairly expensive. Um, the only way that even I can do something like this is by buying everything pretty much used. The used market is the only way that this would become a reality for me. So if you guys are interested in it, you can go ahead. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those things where they don't really tell you the pricing. And the typical thing is if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford it. So... <laughs> Yes, they are very expensive, but they are a completely different experience, yeah. the home theater. I mean, most people don't even know they exist. So this might be your first time even hearing about D-Box. So, I mean, you can most definitely look it up, but if you do ever want to experience it, you know, if very few people have it, unfortunately, so it's very difficult to experience it. But if you do decide you want to look into it, try, try the used market. Look on eBay, look at AVS. Just see if you can find something used. I mean, that's the only way that I can recommend it at that. I mean, the prices otherwise are too expensive. Sure. Definitely pretty out of reach for most people. And like I said, I'd, this will be way, way, way beyond my budget. Um, my biggest takeaway from this literally is my home theater sucks. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I love my home theater, guys. Um, I think I've done a pretty good job with it. But I've never, ever in my life literally heard anything even remotely like this. I mean, my local cinema, of course, not even in comparison. They're Dolby Atmos, um, Dolby Cinema, none of those. But this is absolutely, what you've done is phenomenal. Oh, I mean, the the level of detail in this. I mean, you saw when we came down the stairs and went to kind of like the waiting area, the hangout area, just even the attention to detail that you've got there tells me how much detail you've put into this and there's a lot of automation stuff that he's got computer stuff and um and i'll let you kind of maybe explain some of that and how that worked but just literally overall <sighs> i'm looking at these going all right i gotta figure out a way to to buy some man because now i couldn't do the rts the rts are the towers you know, what would work for me is like the monitor, which is yeah. basically they, minus the they, bottom uh, part. They call them the RMs, okay. the reference monitors, basically. So they make like a 210, which would be 210 inch. There's, I think, a 28, maybe? Well, there's a, there's two eights. Yeah, Eight? There's a 210s, 212s, and 215s. Yeah. So, um, but my goodness, man. I mean, just, it's literally breathtaking. Literally breathtaking. I've just never experienced anything like that. Um, I've smiled a lot at, at other people's home because I'm enjoying it. But I tell you guys, I've never experienced something quite like this. All right, so as you can see during that demo, the seats were going kind of nuts. Now for this demo, just so that you could see a little bit more visually what was going on, we did turn up the actuators pretty much wide open, right? Yeah, we, we turned it all the way up. Yeah, so, and again, when you're watching a movie, I think that's the the issue that sometimes they do is they'll crank those up too high and so it doesn't match what you're seeing on screen. You know, if there's a little bit of rumble, you know, from a small explosion, but you got this massive vibration here, it just doesn't match yeah. visually and your body doesn't say that this is a seamless transition. Um, so normally when we were watching earlier the demo, it just blended seamlessly. Now when the cannons came out in Fury, Holy crap. I mean, this thing was like, I mean, it was pulling me up and down sideways. That was phenomenal. But then when you've got the tank just moving, you know, you're just kind of doing this really small movements. Yep. 
So it's really cool how it matches what's happening on screen. So that's pretty dope. All right, so the D-Box was basically like a 3D experience because we had motion involved. And so then pops up on the screen, we're going to the next demo and it's like, but there's more. And so at that point, we began to watch a movie. What clip was it? Uh, that was uh, the pod race from okay. the Phantom Menace. So from the Phantom Menace, we're watching the pod race. And as the engine fires up and the turbine starts turning, I literally start feeling air. And so we've got some crazy contraptions. It's, it's kind of simplistic in its design, but the brains behind it is this guy right here, Mr. Nick. So I'm gonna let Nick kind of explain how this system's kind of set up and how he implemented a 4D into Tony's home theater. All right, so I'm a good uh, home theater friend of Tony's. So he came to me, uh, this was like maybe two weeks ago, not even, with the idea of, you know, what can we do to take home theater to the next level? I mean, you already have D-Box, which is amazing, but yeah, you know, let's take it to the next level. So uh, he came up with the idea, maybe, you know, heard some things online, some idea of putting fans in your theater and, you know, you would have them you know, blow air on you. There are lots of scenes in movies you could have air coming on you. You could be, you know, riding a motorcycle or, you know, a convertible or a boat or you're jumping out of an airplane, um, you know, or you're, you know, in a sandstorm or something like that. Anyway, so I did some brainstorming um, and I came up with a, a system that um, you would be able to control the uh, IR controlled fans from timestamps in a movie. So Tony will go through the movie and he'll come up with some timestamps for low, medium, high, or off for the fan speeds. And then my program would read in those, those times and would send them to the fans automatically. That's my, my key uh, design was to make the system completely automatic. So the program will detect the media file you're playing. It'll keep track of where you are in the media file. You can pause the movie. You can resume the movie. You can skip forward to the movie. And the fans will always know where you are and will always be playing the correct fan speed uh, for the scenes that you're watching. And then even variables like in your room, you know, you gotta calibrate, just like you calibrate audio, you gotta calibrate your fans for your room. Your fans may be 10 feet away from your seats. So you gotta build a delay factor because it takes time for the air to get from the fans to the seats. So you gotta do some math and you gotta figure out the delay factor uh, for that. And also spin up time of the fans. It takes longer to spin up from off to on than it does to go from high to low speed. So I, I worked up, I mean, I spent a few days, you know, kind of coming up with a, it's kind of beta software right now. It's brand new. I mean, we just installed this a few days ago, um, but we got it done in time for an awesome demo. Yes. Um, so we're going to, you know, start creating these fan files for movies and for future demo scenes. All right, guys, I have absolutely enjoyed my time here in Tony's theater. So Tony, thank you seriously so much for allowing me to come and hang out with you today and to share your incredible home theater with my audience, man. And so one thing I wanted to do maybe a little bit different in this um, home theater tour is kind of allow you an opportunity to share some different things, maybe things that you did right, some things that you wish you could change in your theater so that you guys at home, if you're considering doing a theater in your room and your setup, maybe you can get some inspiration, some things to do and some things maybe to avoid in your journey. And so uh, with that said, let me kind of just jump into some questions and, uh, and let's get your advice on this. Sounds good. I want to thank you for coming as well, actually. Um, it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, been a, a great guest Thanks, and I really do appreciate it. So Tony, what's the best part about having a home theater? Okay, well, for me, basically, it's about being able to kind of rewatch any movie that you might have in your collection on, you know, the so-called big screen. You know, there's always movies that come out, you're like, man, I gotta see that in the, th I have to see that in the theaters. Um, but once that time period's over, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Unless they re-release it. Sure. So being able to have your own, essentially personal home theater or personal theater in your home sure. allows you to kind of recreate that experience anytime you want. Yeah. With any of the movies that you have. And, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, people throwing popcorn on you or talking <laughs> yep. or being interrupted by cell phones. I mean, there's so many, I mean, unfortunately, as time goes on, technology gets into our lives, it becomes more of a distraction, you know, and plenty of times people are on their phones while they're watching the movie. It's like, you know, we paid good money to see this. Yeah, Please absolutely. turn off the... <laughs> sure, it's, it's annoying. Be cur courteous. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, basically, and... 
you know, if you if you do, you know, take your time, you build up your theater, you get the right equipment. I mean, most definitely most home theaters can surpass any commercial cinema. Yeah, absolutely. So Tony, what about like maybe some mistakes or things that you would kind of do differently along your journey? Because probably like me, you've gone through a process that didn't happen overnight. Um, this took you many years to make and get to this point. And so maybe looking back, what are some maybe mistakes that you made that you could share with us? Sure. Uh, basically, I mean, every room has a limitation, so you have to work within those limitations. Yeah. One thing that I would probably consider changing is my my riser. Even though I love the riser, I just I, I don't think I would have done it from wall to wall. Mm. I think I would have done it under the individual seats and then just have like a stair going up to each individual seat. Now, the reason why I say that is if you can look behind me, um, I can't do really do a full a full size tower there. So I'm kind of now that kind of limits me. Gotcha. to the type of speaker that I can put back there. And, and don't get me wrong, I mean, even these JTR slanted eights are supremely powerful speakers, but I mean, if I wanted to do a full range JTR s uh, speaker back there, you know, it's the, the height of the yeah, tweeter is yeah. gonna be too tall, you know, so it just kind of takes, uh, takes some options away from me in the future. Now, yes, I could remove the riser and do the individual risers under the chairs, but you know, ultimately, you know, that's something that I could consider way down in the future. I'm, I'm not gonna do it now, but that is something that maybe I would have, after I've experienced it or had it, would have liked to have redone. So Tony, what would you say that the best thing that you did here in your theater, like what excites you the most about your theater? What did you do the right the most? Well, in terms of hardware, um, I would say it, it's gonna be the JTR speakers and the D-Box. Mm -hmm. I mean, those two things, kind of take it to the next level Incredible. but in general um it's more about being part of the community that is willing to demo each other's theaters i mean i've been to a lot of get-togethers you get have a lot of different ideas and you get to experience a lot of different things um sometimes unfortunately you get kind of stuck in your own bubble and it's you know if you don't go out and try to experience other things you don't know what you might be missing or what you could improve upon um, you know, and in youth man's case, it's like sometimes there may be experiences that you don't even know exist. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to know that they exist. And, you know, who knows, maybe you want to add it or, you know, add it to your own theater. Second, I would say that uh, basically getting to know some important people in the industry, some very knowledgeable, such as my friend Nick, who did the programming for the, the wind. Um, other than that, you know, I met, you know, with Jeff. You know, it was it was awesome that Jeff was local. I, I originally already had what I thought was my dream set up until I went to a get together and they had JTR speakers. Now, the, my previous Vanderstein setup was very good. It's just that what I noticed is as I went closer to the volumes that I'd want to listen at, the speakers kind of, kind of gave out or they kind of lost some of their imaging, um, basically overdriving the speakers yeah. to the point where you had to bring it back down in volume. So I went to a get together, experienced the JTRs, and that was basically the end of that story. I mean, I went a f the full JTR route. It's pretty amazing. Um, you know, I met with Mark Seaton. I previously owned some of his uh, Seaton high power submersives, also very good subs. Um, Chris Seymour from Seymour AV. You know, youth man's got a screen material. I got a screen material. It's very good. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to do a big shout out to Mario, um, who works at JMR Seating, which is why D Box was even a possibility for me. Uh, he was able to essentially get me the remaining parts that I needed to complete my setup. I, I found everything used for the most part, except for the the processor, and Mario was able to get me hooked up essentially with a processor so that I could finish my setup. Hmm. Then um, another person I really do want to make sure I thank is Steve Avansky from Cortex VIP Cinema. Now, Steve works at a company, the, the Cortex VIP Cinema is actually for the affluent home theater enthusiast. If you really should want to look into them, they can do Dolby Cinema or Dolby Cinema processors for the home, 64 channels. Wow. And I mean, we're talking the full fledged, what you get in the uh, you know commercial cinema in your home. Gotcha. And they, they, they do a whole design system for you. It's pretty, pretty epic. So if you have money <laughs> and you want, you know, you want top of the line, they're most definitely the people to go with. And so Tony, I know that no home theater is perfect. I know I just shared a video on my channel 
um, just a couple of videos ago that um, my theater isn't perfect. And so maybe think about something in your theater that if you could change that, you would. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've thought about, a lot, again, going back to, you know, everyone's room is kind of what it is. You can modify it. But if I, you know, if I had the opportunity to either build, dig out, or just have been lucky enough to find a room with 10 foot ceilings, mm -hmm. right now I'm with eight foot ceilings. I, I still think it's really good, but I've been to a couple places with 10 foot ceilings or 12 foot ceilings. And the ex visually, I don't know, it, it, it goes from more to, from a home theater mm -hmm. to more of a cinema feel. Gotcha. So it's a very different feeling when the, when the ceiling is much higher than eight feet i yeah. think so i mean of course you know if you know if i could have done that that would have been good and then also you know if you notice we got three seats across the front mm -hmm. if i could have you know had a room that was wider you know obviously just a larger room yeah i would have liked five across you know so that way you know you could have two couples at least and then you still have your one primary listening position but um those would be the things that you know if i could i would like to have changed, but unfortunately, like I said, you know, everyone's room is what it is and you have to work with the limitations of that. And so the last question would be like, to maybe the guys that are wanting to do something like this, maybe they can't go, you know, this full on scale. Cause this, this is, like I said, guys, this is the most amazing system I've ever heard um, in a home theater environment. And actually even in a commercial cinema, my commercial cinema doesn't match this, but what advice would you give to the guy uh, maybe watching this video that is considering doing a home theater in their house. Sure. I mean, take it slow. I mean, this wasn't built overnight. Sure. I mean, I've been working on this for, I'm, I think over 10 years. Yeah. I mean, piece by piece, sure. you know, make, you know, just basically make wise, wise purchasing decisions, you know, if, buy used too. I mean, I, yep. some of the stuff in here is you like on, from the used market. Sure. As long as you know, the previous owner took care of it should be fine. Um, and then obviously learn as much as you can from the community, you know, and, and YouTubers such as Youth Man. Mm. I know he's on a journey of learning a whole bunch of different things with the mini DSP. Oh my gosh, yes. But, you know, these are all things that, you know, don't just buy equipment and throw it together. Yeah. Try to learn the ins and out of it and really what will help make your system what it turns into. It's more than just the hardware. Awesome. Implementing was about a week. Um, Oh, really? What a lame-o. That's my wife. Hey, darling. And so I'm going to let Tim... Nick. Dead gummit! I knew it! It sucked! He's like, really? I'm never inviting you here. 